This is the first time I've been to Chile, and I've had a really good time since I got here two days ago. And I'm very excited to see what I've seen so far. Yesterday was very crowded. Today is also very crowded. It's amazing. I'm going to take your picture. There's so many people out there. It's amazing. So I, I came from California also. Uh, I live in Silicon Valley. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years. Uh, I've had many businesses. And uh, I wanted to share with you some things that I found. The number one thing I found is I am a serial failure. I have failed more times than probably anybody I know. Some people will come to me and ask me for advice on certain things. And I tell you, I could tell you nothing of what to do right, but I could tell you everything that you should not do. So today I'm going to show you what you should not do, which is most of what I've done in the past 20 years. It'll save you some time, I hope. Um, when I was, well, the good thing about this is that uh, every bad decision I make, yeah, I have lots of good stories for when I go to parties with my family. Oh, talk to him. It's very funny. He's a complete idiot. So it comes in handy, at least, for that. Um, the number one thing, make sure you quit as soon as things get tough. Just stop. It's very important. When I was younger, a little boy, I used to love to sell anything. Most of it was legal. Some of it maybe, I don't know. It depends which state or country you're in. But I would sell anything. I would uh, candy or fireworks, a little dangerous, um, clothing. I used to mow grass. I didn't sell grass. I used to shovel snow when it would snow. I grew up in Washington, D.C. It snowed a lot, and people shot at you a lot. It was very dangerous. That's why I moved to California. And, and when I was very young, my friend's father bought one of the first Apple computers. I think it was the first Apple computer. And I became obsessed with computers. I would, uh, the Atari and the Commodore, and I would program the computers. I loved it. I was only maybe 12 or 13 at the time. Um, and I began to program and make games and sell the games. I couldn't even drive. My poor mother had to drive me all over the area to stores to sell software. And it started selling actually quite well, but I only sold in my local area. This was a long time ago. No internet. So I wanted to take an advertisement out in a magazine. Um, but I was afraid to take out that advertisement because it cost a lot of money at the time. And I was afraid, well, what happens if no one buys my software? What happens if I spend all this money and no one calls? So I was young. I didn't place the ad. So now in my head, I always regretted that because I always wonder what would have happened if I had placed that ad in that magazine. Could it have generated a large company? I'll never know now. So it always sticks in the back of my head that I should have placed that ad in the magazine. Because now, what would happen if uh, Michael Dell hadn't placed the ad in the magazine to sell the personal computers from his dorm room? There would be no Dell computer, and poor Kevin would have had no job to do the software for Dell. <laughs> so your little choices really have some ramifications. So now, I always make sure, if I have an opportunity that comes my way, I don't want to ever say again, uh, what could have happened if I had Larry Ellison, Bill Gates? What would have happened if Steve Jobs would have just stopped early on at Nexus? Steve, Kevin wouldn't have had a job there either. So number two rule, expect overnight success. By tomorrow, we're all going to be rich very quickly. Uh, my father used to say, persistency, thou art a jewel. And he was very correct. You, there's very little you cannot accomplish, even if you're not so smart like me, if you're per persistent and you're consistent. It's so much you could do. And if persistency is half the battle, showing up is half the battle, then the other half of the battle is showing up every day, just to do it over and over and over again without giving up. What's the expression? The, uh, an overnight success takes about 10 years. From the outside, things look very easy. 
oh wow, that guy came out of nowhere, that lady came out of nowhere, but you look at the details, there's always a lot of hardship, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering to get there, so you have to endure all that, right? So I'm very happy that uh, Dyson did not quit at 500 prototypes of his vacuum cleaner or after Hoover sued him, or no, he sued Hoover, excuse me, after they copied him. He went through so many challenges to come out with so many amazing products and I'm glad he didn't stop because I love my Dyson. And if my mother had a Dyson when I was little, I would have probably volunteered to vacuum more because it's pretty cool. My father would have not had to beat me as much because I didn't do my chores. But I love this one when you're in the airport, you put your hands in. But if Dyson had stopped, we'd all be using this instead. Still, I hate these when you see them in the airport. Or my favorite, the little vacuum cleaner. If he had stopped at 500 prototypes and said, ah, I can't do this anymore, I give up, I'd be using this in my house. That's not fun. So persistency and the consistency I found, it's hard to do, but important to do. Hold out for perfect. Make sure you don't do anything until all the circumstances are absolutely right. When I didn't place the ad, in the magazine, I wound up having to work for somebody else for a few years. Right? I went to college and then I was miserable in my personal job that I had. I did not like it. And I was always waiting for the right time to start up again with my own company. So I waited and I waited. Then eventually I finally started doing some things at night and in the evenings and the weekends. And things started to happen. Within three years, I had about 50 employees. I was doing millions of dollars for a manu in a small manufacturing business I had created. But I didn't wait for perfect. I stopped waiting for perfect, because perfect never comes. Product engineer, you could engineer a product to death and just keep engineering it, engineering it, but you have to ship it at some point. So don't wait for perfect, because I've waited for perfect many times, and it doesn't come. Oh, sorry, I don't know how that got in there. Um, <laughs> Ah, this is an important one. Go for the cash. How many times have I told my wife, we're going to get rich, this is the one? Maybe 20, 30 times different products. Every time, this is the one. The candy from Japan. The dinosaurs from Japan. The egg and splat you throw on the wall. I had all these, I had so many different products. There must have been 20. And I was always focused on a product, how much I could sell. Pet Rock, I'm going to sell a million of these every time. I still have maybe 50,000 dinosaurs in my basement. <laughs> and there are a couple candy manufacturers in Japan who want to kill me. <laughs> I told the guy in Japan, I said, we're going to sell a lot of this product. He knew my wife, so I told him the same thing. We're going to sell a lot of this product. I, I anticipate this much. I'm going to order one big 40-foot container. I got him so excited, he made two 40-foot containers in hopes that the next one I would order very soon. Ten years later, he still has that 40-foot container in Japan, so he doesn't like me a lot. It wasn't my fault, though. I didn't tell him to make that extra container. When I have the businesses where I concentrate on the money, I was not happy. I still have some of those businesses. And when you focus on the money like that, in the long run, it doesn't make me happy. So um, I have a girl and a boy. When my boy was born, about a year and a half later, uh, he was diagnosed with autism. And it's a very difficult thing for our family and other families with autism. And at home, it's difficult. Uh, we fight depression. We work with him as a group. It takes a lot. And there are other families out there that suffer way worse than we do. So this became my new passion to help fund research for autism and for my son and to raise awareness for autism. And when I started my most recent company, Slice, I attached that to it. So we donate a percentage of all sales to fund autism research. So when you have a cause, it's not just money. It makes life a lot better. And you could handle all the pressure and the challenges that come your way if you have something that's bigger than yourself to think about. Because everything before was always very selfish. It was, how much money am I going to make? How much can I sell? 
I don't think about this anymore. I think about what can I do here? How can I help the customers out? What can I do to make it better for them? Help them make a dollar. Maybe I'll make a dime. Make enough people who, who uh, help enough people make a dollar. I'll make a lot of dimes. And this gets me through a lot of things. So. Listen to no one. You're an island. Do it yourself. You don't need anybody else. I don't want to hear it. I cannot. I don't want to listen to anybody else. I'm going to do it my way, and I'm going to waste 18 years doing it my way instead of learning from other people who've already done it. They've been there. They've already suffered. I could learn from them and avoid so many problems. I didn't do that in the beginning. I always thought I could do it myself. You can't do it yourself. I thought, ah, technology, I need a cell phone and a laptop. Well, you do, but you need a lot more than that. You need things like this. This is amazing that these go on all over the world. I think it's just a wonderful thing. And I find sometimes when I work so hard, I get caught up so hard in working and doing emails that I don't get out of the office, or I don't get out of the house. So now I try to make it a goal at least once every three months, more if I can, to go to something like this, to get positive in my head, to learn from other people, because I, you know, I'm the stupidest guy on the face of the planet. I need to get as much good as I can inside my head to help me through the next day. So it's always important for that, I think. This is, I'm king at this. Be all things to all people. Never say no to anybody or anything. I'd be happy to do that. I've got a new business idea. Let's do it. Can you buy this? Yes. Can we do more of this? Absolutely. I am so bad at this. So I have so many balls in the air, and I make everyone's life miserable, including mine. So I've had to learn how to say no more. I'm still practicing. I'm not very good. You could come up and ask me for cash later. I'll probably give it to you. I say yes, because I'm still not very good at saying no. So I have three businesses now, and spread very thin. I'm trying to just concentrate on one. Try to say no more often. Try to focus more often. I have attention deficit. I am addicted to making new products. It's not a good thing. Very expensive habit. So focus is much better, I think. So I'm working at getting more focus because I really don't want to be doing this till I'm dead. Too many balls in there. And my favorite, screw humanity. Just concentrate on ourselves again. This is the most important one. And it took me many years to figure this out. It ties to the other one also. But the little things we do have so much effect, especially now, globally, it's amazing. If you have an idea in your head, there's really no excuse not to act on it. You have all the resources. We all have the fear. It's easy to overcome if you just start walking, just doing little things one at a time. And the people that you need to be around will come to you. You may not know them now, but if you start, just start. They'll present themselves to you. 90% of the people I work with now, today, I didn't know three years ago, they've been slowly coming to my lives because action brings them there. You have so many things in your head that only you could ever do. Somebody asked me yesterday, I'm afraid to tell people some of my ideas because they might steal them. No one's going to steal your idea. It's your idea. You're the only one who has the passion to go after it and to do it. What you do now can affect so many people in positive ways. What you don't do now will never help anybody. You have to do it. Humanity needs entrepreneurs. No change comes without someone starting it. And the best way I know of to create change is through entrepreneurship, and that's why everyone's here, and that's why all these go on all over the world. So my challenge is, if you have that idea, start today, just one little thing every day, and you'll see it. It'll come. It'll come. And make sure you don't do anything I've done over the past 20 years, and you'll be much better off. Thank you very much.